Hello and welcome back to Euro Football Daily, where with the transfer window slamming shut in just over 24 hours' time, we run through 10 managers who've been let down by their club this summer. 10. Unai Emery You'd think on the back of his achievements in 21-22, Unai Emery would have been back to a greater degree in the transfer market. Villarreal may have only finished 7th in the league, improving by one point on his debut campaign, but the four-time Europa League winner once again showed his pedigree in European competition, backing up his 2021 Europa League triumph with a run to the Champions League semi-finals, beating Atalanta, Juventus and six-time champions Bayern Munich along the way. If he expected to be rewarded this summer with a raft of new signings though, Emery has been left sorely disappointed, with the club spending just over 1 million euros at the time of writing, the third lowest tally in the Spanish top flight behind Athletic Club and Rayo Vallecano, who are yet to spend a penny. Giovanni Lo Celso has returned on loan, Watford's Kiko Femenia has arrived with Mario Gaspar going the other way, meaning that despite the loss of flying left-back Pervis Estupiñan to Brighton, the only new arrivals have been veterans Jose Luis Morales and Pepe Reina, with a combined age of 79. Despite an excellent unbeaten start to La Liga, it looks like it'll be difficult for Emery to recreate his European magic this term. 9. Ernesto Valverde Throughout June 2022, Athletic Club's presidential election caught the attention of Spanish football fans. The direction that the club would take had been laid bare by its candidates. Iñaki Arechabeleta wanted former Leeds boss Marcelo Bielsa to replace their departed coach Marcelino, whilst John Uriarte favoured bringing back Ernesto Valverde. Uriarte prevailed, winning 46% of the vote, 13% more than his rival, and Valverde returned to management for the first time since his January 2020 dismissal by Barcelona. Having spent six years at the club as a player before managing them on two occasions, even qualifying for the Champions League in his first season back in 13-14, this proved a popular appointment with the Basque club faithful. But if he was expecting to be backed in the market, then he was sorely mistaken, with 25-year-old forward Gorka Gurusetka signed on a free and Ande Herrera on loan, their only arrivals so far. Having only spent 12.8 million euros since the start of 2019-20 on transfer fees, this shouldn't come as a total surprise, but it does go to show the solid work that Gaizka Garitano and Marcelino, Valverde's predecessors, did in keeping this unique club competitive. Good luck to him. 8. Frank Lampard Few managers have entered the 2022-23 campaign under more pressure than Frank Lampard. He may have guided Everton to Premier League survival in his first four months with the club, but it was hardly inspiring, losing seven of his first nine games in charge, only cementing the Toffees' top-flight status on the penultimate day of the season. So you'd anticipate owner Farhad Mashiri to dip his hand in his pocket. However, despite building up a reputation as a big spender, having splashed over £500 million since his 2016 takeover, the same support is yet to materialise this summer. At the time of writing, Everton have paid fees for three players, Amadou Onana, Dwight McNeil and Neil Mopé. Not bad signings at all, and they are joined by the likes of James Tarkovsky and Connor Cody at Goodison Park, but they're also not good enough to give fans hope of a successful season. With hundreds of millions tied up in a new stadium too, ownership will want the club to remain in the Premier League, and the truth is, it will be just as much their fault as it would be Lampard's if they do go down. 7. Antoine Comboare Antoine Comboare produced miracles at Nantes in 21-22. In his first full season in northwest France, the former PSG boss steered Nantes to ninth, with their 55 points their best league tally in 18 years. But that only tells half the story, as Comboare was able to lead them to Coupe de France glory, dispatching Monaco and Nice to secure the club's first trophy since 2001. But if the former PSG and Aberdeen defender was expecting a raft of new signings to push on, he was left sorely disappointed, as so far their only new signings have been Mustafa Mohamed on loan from Galatasaray and 33-year-old veteran midfielder Musa Sissoko. Watford's captain during their harrowing 21-22 campaign, the former Newcastle and Spurs man's performances suggest he is truly over the hill, as his shots, progressive carries, pressures and tackles all ranked in the bottom 20% of midfielders in Europe. But that wasn't the worst of it, with his 33 passes attempted 8th in the Hornets squad, barely the sort of influence envisaged for the 71 cap French international. Sure enough, Nantes are struggling, with one win from their opening four games. With four teams to be relegated from Ligue 1 this year, Les Jeunes Verts best be careful. 6. Alessio Dionisi Having established themselves as a mid-table Serie A side in recent years, Sassuolo find themselves in a tricky position. Something of a stepping stone, each year they see their star performers move up the footballing ladder, as Alessio Dionisi has discovered in his first full off-season in charge of the Nero Verdi. 
The latest big names to leave the Mapei Stadium are attackers Giacomo Raspadori and Gianluca Scamacca, who between them were responsible for 30 of the 62 goals Dionisi's side scored last campaign. Between them, the pair will earn Sassuolo more than 70 million euros, with Scamacca leaving for West Ham for 40 and Napoli having a 25 million obligation to buy on Raspadori after spending 5 million to get him on loan. Andrea Pinamonti has come in as a replacement from Inter, but the 23-year-old has proved inconsistent on many a loan spell while 21-year-old 12 million euro signing Agustin Alvarez, signed from Uruguayan side Peñarol, is yet to make his debut. Sure, the money made is no joke for Sassuolo, but losing two of his key attackers is going to make this season's job a whole lot harder for Dionisi. At least they still have talisman Domenico Berardi, for now at least. 5. Thomas Rice Playing their first Bundesliga campaign since 2009-10, Thomas Rice's Bochum can be satisfied with their 13th place finish in 21-22. Their 38 league goals might have been the fourth worst tally in the division, but they pulled off shock after shock, beating Eintracht, Hoffenheim, Wolfsburg, Dortmund and champions Bayern Munich 4-2 at home. This summer though hasn't been easy. Five of their 11 most used players from last season have left, including promising centre-back Armel Belakotchap, who's joined Southampton, while top scorer Sebastian Polter moved to Schalke. Having spent just €800,000 replacing them, they appear doomed, and their results don't offer much encouragement, with 13 goals conceded, including 7 against Bayern, a tally topped only by Bournemouth in Europe's top 5 leagues. Having spent 18 years of his life with Bochum as a player and coach, there's little chance of Rice walking away, but he must be incredibly worried about their prospects in the upcoming campaign. 4. Marco Giampaolo after three solid campaigns in charge of Sampdoria between 2016 and 2019, Marco Giampaolo's career and the fortunes of his former side have taken a turn for the worse. He lasted just 28 games across his spells at Milan and Torino, with seven wins leading to dismissals within five months of both appointments. And things haven't been much better for Sampdoria, as they seem permanently stuck in mid-table. With the blue check Yati three points clear of relegation in January 2022, they turned to their former manager and five wins in their final 16 league games saw them survive by six points. A summer rebuild? Not a bit of it. Antonio Candreva, who provided 17 league goals and assists last term, has been allowed to join Salernitana on loan. Morten Thorsby, their third most used player, has been sold to Union Berlin for 3.2 million euros. Yoshida has left on a free, and Damsgaard, a player linked with a 40 million euro move a year ago, has been sold for 16. With their statement signing Sassuolo's Francesco Caputo, ready to link up with Qualiarella to form a strike force with a combined age of 73, another relegation battle beckons. 3. Ruben Amorim It's not been an easy summer to be a manager of a Portuguese football team. Sergio Conceição's Porto have lost Vitinha and Fabio Vieira, and Jorge Jesus has seen starman Darwin Nunez join Liverpool. But in our opinion, no Primera Liga boss has had it harder than Ruben Amorim. Following four trophies in two years, including one league title and back-to-back 85-point -back campaigns, he's seen a mass exodus this summer, with €126 million Euros worth of talent sold. While a hefty chunk of that was Nuno Mendes' pre-arranged transfer to PSG, he'd have no doubt been crestfallen to see Mateus Nunes join Joao Palinha in making a switch to the Premier League. A problem compounded by the fact that Pablo Sarabia, their top scorer last season with 15 league goals, with new €10.6 million Euro signing Ruben Vinagre joining Everton on loan, their only other major arrivals are promising Dutch centre-back Jeremiah Sanjust, former Man City right-back Pedro Porro and Francisco Trincao, who joins on loan from Barcelona. If the sporting CP board expect Amarim to overperform once again, they might be in for a shock. 2. Eric Ten Hag Just because Manchester United have bounced back from losing their first two games of the campaign, doesn't mean everything is now going smoothly. Far from it, and given the recent protests, the fans know it too. Appointing Eric Ten Hag is a step in the right direction, of course, but only if his bosses trust him to drag the club back into the Champions League. And while we're sure they do, the £2.5 million spent to release him from his Ajax contract is no small fee for a manager, they could definitely do a better job of showing it. Despite announcing his appointment in April, the club's recruitment efforts over the summer showed no real direction, with most of it spent courting Frankie de Jong, who is doing everything in his power to stay at Barcelona. While they spent big money on Casemiro and Lisandro Martinez, there's also rumours of discontent in the boardroom, with Ten Hag and the Glazers at odds over the future of Cristiano Ronaldo, with the American owners wanting to keep hold of the 37-year-old. These off-field issues will likely persist for the foreseeable future. For Ten Hag's sake, let's hope they don't interfere with what goes on on the pitch as well. 1. Brendan Rodgers 
Who would want to be Brendan Rodgers right now? The Northern Irishman stabilised Leicester City after a few underwhelming campaigns post-Premier League win, but upon entering his fourth full season in charge at the King Power, his time could be nearing an end, if results are anything to go by. But that's not entirely his fault. Financial issues mean the Foxes haven't spent any money this summer at all. While they only signed veteran goalkeeper Alex Smithies on a free after captain Kasper Schmeichel left the East Midlands for the French Riviera. But the problems don't only stem from above, with his players attracting attention too. James Madison was on Newcastle's radar, but it's Wesley Fofana who's proved to be the biggest concern. The 21-year-old centre-back effectively withdrew himself from the first team amid interest from Chelsea, eventually forcing through a £75 million move to Thomas Tuchel's side, earning the wrath of the Leicester City faithful. It might allow Rodgers a late foray into the market, but it could be just a little bit too late to save him. So that's our take on 10 managers who've been let down by their club this summer, but who else has suffered at the hands of a penny-pinching board? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, drop us a like and subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and you'll never miss an upload. We'll see you next time.